Hi, welcome back. We're in Work Packet 2.1. We're on pages 9 and 10. We're going to talk about conditional statements today. So what is a conditional statement? We talked about compound statements and simple statements, and two simple statements which we can combine into a compound statement using the words and or or into a conjunction or a disjunction. Well, today we're going to talk about conditional statements, right? Conditional. If something is true, then the other thing is also true, right? One thing depends. It's conditional upon the other thing. So a statement that can be written in if then, if then form. That is a conditional statement, right? Symbolic form is this P, if P, then Q, right? P, then Q, or P implies Q. One of the two. The hypothesis, hypothesis, right, is the phrase immediately followed by the word my hypothesis. So if something is true, that's my hypothesis. The conclusion is the phrase immediately following the word then. All right, so if P, then Q. If my hypothesis, then my conclusion. Let's get into some examples over here. So identify the hypothesis and conclusion in the following conditional statements. If you live in Nashville, then you live in Tennessee. So the hypothesis follows the if statement, so that you live in Nashville. You live in Nashville. And the conclusion follows the then statement. Then you live in Tennessee. So you live in Tennessee would be conclusion. Question 3 says, if a quadrilateral is a square, then it has four right angles. Right, so what follows the if? The hypothesis. So a quadrilateral is a square. Okay. Now what is the conclusion? That which follows the then statement, it has four right angles. There we go. Pretty straightforward. If, then, whatever follows the if is, hypo is the hypothesis, the P. Whatever follows the then is the conclusion, the Q. Okay? Then it says, writing conditional statements. Write the following staples, statements in an if-then format. What if it isn't written as if-then? Can we, can we translate it into an if-then format? Because that will help us when we're trying to determine its truth value. Remember, later on, we're going to try and determine its truth value. That's what we're always doing. Is it true or is it false? All numbers divisible by 4 are also divisible by 2. There are actually two statements here. You're divisible by 4, you're divisible by 2. Those are two statements. That's my P, that's my Q. So I can, I can rephrase, this as, rephrase this as, if a number is divisible by 4, then it, adult, then it is also divisible by 2. Right, so I'm going to write that as a conditional statement. So if a number is divisible by 4, is divisible by 4, comma, then it is divisible by 2. So in a statement like this, you've got to separate out the two simple statements that are being made. I'm making two statements. A number is divisible by 4, a number is divisible by 2. And then I have to understand which leads to which. Which is the hypothesis, which is the conclusion. Valentine's Day is... Whoops, Valentine's Day is in February. Two statements. It is Valentine's Day. It is February. Okay. So if it is Valentine's Day, then it is February. That's what I know. If it is Valentine's Day, then it is February. And why would I write it like that? Because if I write it in this way as a conditional statement, then I can better figure out what its truth value is. That's what I'm trying to do. What is the truth value of a conditional statement? Okay, let's go to the next page. So now we know what a conditional is, right? If P, then Q. If hypothesis, then conclusion. We're going to have to look at some other um, related conditional statements. And one of them is called the inverse. So you have the conditional statement. Now I have the inverse statement, okay? And it's formed by negating 
by hypothesis and conclusion. So, looks like this. Not P. If not P, then not Q. Right, the original conditional statement said, if P, then Q. Now I'm negating the hypothesis and the conclusion, so I'm sticking the tilde in front of the P and the Q, and I get, if not P, then not Q. Right, that's not the same statement, right? If I go to school, then I'll be smart, is not the same as, if I don't go to school, then I won't be smart. Right, that's not necessarily true. Right, I could do something else and be smart. Right, all I know is that if I go to school, then I'll be smart. So that's where it gets tricky. Right? That's where it gets tricky. That's where the logic gets a little tricky. And we have to use this notation to help us understand whether that inverse would indeed be true. Right? In the example I cited, it would be false. But here, we don't know. Right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to simplify things so we can use logic and determine a truth value. So here we have the converse. The converse is formed by switching the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the original conditional statement said P arrow Q, if P then Q, right? So we're going to switch that. We're going to say if Q then P. If Q then P. Right? If I'm smart, then I went to school. Also not very true, right? If the original statement was true, right? If I go to school, then I'll be smart. It doesn't necessarily follow that if I'm smart, then I went to school. Right? Hmm, you have to think about that a little bit. Contrapositive. Contra means against, right? This prefix means against. So contrapositive. And contrapositive is formed by both negating and switching. And switching the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the symbolic form is not Q. If not Q, therefore not P. Remember the original one, that the conditional statement was if P then Q. So I switched them, Q then P, and then I stuck the not in front, right? The tilde in front. That's the contrapositive. Okay, you switch and negate. Just for your information, just look at these two over here for a moment. How do they relate to each other? How do I go from here, this statement, to this statement? By switching and by negating. So interesting, interestingly, the converse is the contrapositive of the inverse. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, guys, so it says write the inverse, converse, and contrapositive of the following conditional statements. Determine the truth value. If false, provide a counterexample. Okay, very good. Okay, if it is Saturday, then there is no school. Okay, this is the original statement. This is the conditional statement. So what I can do is I can evaluate that, right? What is its truth value? If it is Saturday, then there is no school. True, true to me, true. Okay, so let's try the inverse over here. The inverse says um, you got to stick a not in front, right? So if it is not Saturday, if it is not Saturday, then there is no school. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Then there is school. Then there is school. Okay? The original statement said no school, so the, the, the negation of no is that there is school. Right? So, is that true? If it is not Saturday, okay, it's not Saturday, let's say it's Friday, I don't know. Then there is school. Okay, Friday there'd be school, but not Saturday is also Sunday. And that's a counter example. It's false, and the counter example would be Sunday. Right? Okay, let's keep going. Now let's do the converse. And the converse says, oops, you gotta switch them. So if it were if P then Q, now it's if Q then P. If P then Q becomes if Q then P. So if there is no school, if there is no school, comma, then it is Saturday. This becomes the conclusion. Then it is Saturday. Okay, so first we, we just constructed the converse, right? Using the original conditional statement. Now we gotta we got to judge its truth value. Is it true or is it false? I want to know. If there is no school, then, then it is Saturday. If it's false, there must be a counterexample. If there's no school, it's Saturday. No, it could be Sunday, right? It could be Sunday. So that's my counterexample. This is false again. Sunday is a counterexample. Now let's look at the contrapositive. It says, not only do you need to switch them, but you need to negate them. Okay, so I need not Q, then not P. So I'm going to take this one. That's going to be my, 
my hypothesis now. No school becomes school. So if there is school, if there is school, oops, school, then, right, if there is school, then it is not Saturday, right? I have to switch and negate. It is not Saturday. If there's no school, then it's not Saturday. Hmm. Seems, seems true to me. There's no school. It's not going to be Saturday. Right? It can't be Saturday if there's school. So this would be true. Okay, so that's very interesting. So what I find here is that the contrapositive, look at the truth value of the contrapositive, it's the same as the conditional. And look at the truth value of the inverse. Over here, false is the same as the converse. Huh, interesting. And I know that the inverse is the contrapositive to the converse, and I know the contrapositive is the contrapositive to the conditional statement. So, hmm, could it be true that a statement and its contrapositive has the same truth value? Huh, let's try it. Question number three. And let's see if we can find a pattern, right? Some inductive reasoning. There we go. So if the temperature is 25 degrees, then it is below freezing. Okay, this is the original statement. This is the conditional statement. <clears throat> if, then, if, hypothesis, then, conclusion. And this has a truth value. The truth value is true, right? If it's below, if the temperature is 25 degrees, below 32 degrees, then it's below freezing. Okay. Now let's try the inverse. Remember, the inverse is negating. That's all we're going to do. So if it's not below 25 degrees, then it is not below freezing. Okay? Let's write that down. If the temperature is not, is, I'm sorry, not, not 25 degrees. It doesn't say below here, right? Okay, that was my mistake. If the temperature is not 25 degrees, then it is not below freezing. Okay, so if the temperature is not 25 degrees, then it's not below freezing. Okay, so let's say it's 20 degrees. That's not 25 degrees. It's still below freezing. Okay, so that would be false. I just gave you a counterexample. 20 degrees Fahrenheit is my counterexample. So let's look at the converse. The converse is created by switching, right? We're going to switch. So if this is the hypothesis and this conclusion, this becomes the hypothesis, that becomes the conclusion. So if it is below freezing, right? So if it is below freezing, then my conclusion which was my original hypothesis, the temperature is 25 degrees. The temperature is 25 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's below freezing, the temperature has to be 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm, doesn't seem true to me, okay? Seems pretty obvious. That can't, that's not true. You can choose any other temperature uh, that's below freezing, 26, 27, 28, doesn't matter, or 20 degrees, right? So I have my counterexample over here. Okay, guys, contrapositive. Contrapositive is negating and switching, so let's go ahead and do that. If it is not below freezing, so I negate this, I negate the original conclusion, then the temperature is not 25 degrees. The temperature is not. 25 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not below freezing, so the temperature couldn't be 25 degrees Fahrenheit because that would be below freezing. So this is true. And again, we see that the contrapositive and the conditional statement have the same truth value, and the inverse and the converse also have the same truth value. Thank you.